Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of 1998 Represent. On this episode, we're taking a look at small soldiers. And before we get into the episode, um, I was going to do this episode earlier in this series. However, um, the movie had disappeared off streaming for a while. I think it was on Paramount. And um, then it got removed. And most recently, um, in October, it showed up on HBO Max. So I was able to watch it there. Uh, but got some notes here to go over really quick. And then we'll basically just do a breakdown of the movie. All right, so Small Soldiers, uh, first released July 10th, 1998. It made apparently made $71 million on a $40 million budget. I don't know if that's considered to be breaking even now or if the i think like the multiplier is like a 2.5 x multiplier is what you need to um factor in marketing and all that kind of stuff to see if a movie is profitable so i don't know if they're using that formula back in 1998 but it made 71 million off of a 40 million dollar budget don't know what the advertising budget on that was so it could have ended up not making a lot of money um, this, unfortunately, was Phil Hartman's last uh, on-screen film, as with um, Clint Walker as well. Uh, Phil Hartman was uh, like killed, unfortunately, back, I think, in May of that year, of 1998. And this is his final film. And seeing him, it was like he's got that very, um, very noticeable voice. You would obviously recognize it from, like, early seasons of, like, The Simpsons. So I definitely have... I. I'm a big fan of just Phil Hartman from, like, The Simpsons. I remember watching, like, news radio reruns as well. Uh, he was on that show for uh, quite a while. So this is his um, his last on-screen or on-screen role. I don't know if he had any other, like, voice roles after this because this he plays a character in this movie. He's not in the voice cast. He's in the, um, the acting, like, the actual um, humans in the movie. I guess I should say that. But... Um, Last film uh, for him, as well as uh, Clint Walker, who I think retired from acting after uh, completing this film. But I believe Clint Walker did a voice role, while Phil Hartman did it like an like an on screen role. Um, Tommy Lee Jones and looks like um, Bruce um, Dem were um, the only two people that were not from the uh, the Dirty Dozen film. So a lot of the actors from the Dirty Dozen um, ended up doing voices for the commando elite commando elite are basically like your they're basically just the soldier toys and they're going up up against the gorgonite toys um this is a very just fun movie it's been about 10 years since i have seen it so i have forgotten a lot of the smaller bits like there's a few bits that i remembered but um for the most part i had forgotten most of the movie but um, it's just a lot of fun. You can definitely tell all the actors and actresses and um, the voice actors and actresses as well are just having a blast with this movie. Um, it's just incredibly fun. It's not even very long. It's like an hour and like 47 minutes or something. It's kind of short. So it's, um, like I said, it's on HBO Max right now. So I would recommend watching it. It's a blast. Um, basically, it felt like it was like an edgier kind of version of Toy Story, because Toy Story came out like three years before this, and then, uh, you know, a couple years later, Toy Story 2 came out, but this looked like they were trying to kind of capitalize on that and make a more edgy version of Toy Story, and even Joe Dante, the director, um, initially wanted it to be a more edgy movie for teenagers, and apparently there's a lot of stuff that got cut out of the movie um, to kind of appease the sponsors that were doing, like, all the tie-ins, because there was, like, a bunch of toy tie-ins. I think like there was like three or four. Like, there was like at least there was definitely a PlayStation game of it, and I think a few like PC games as well. Probably some other stuff that was tied in as well. So to appease those sponsors, a lot of scenes ended up getting um, getting cut. I don't know if there was ever released like a director's cut or anything like that. It would be cool to see exactly what got uh, cut out. Uh, Stan Winston did some of the like visual effects for the film with some of the like the actual toys actually had models but it ended up being easier for them to use just uh cgi because i remember seeing like a behind the scenes video and like the puppetry on like the um um the commando elite figures and the gorgonite figures is really intricate it's really kind of uh amazing that they were able to do that some of that with, with puppetry uh it ended up being a like be, they were able to end up doing that um, a little bit easier with um, CGI instead. So uh, mostly, I think it was like one-third um, like 
practical effects with the puppets. One third of it was, or a third of it was the puppets. The other two thirds was uh, CGI after getting stuff filmed. Uh, but let's see. This apparently wasn't loved by by critics, but I definitely had a lot of fun watching it. So like, um, critics didn't really really rate it too favorably favorably, but um, I personally had a had a really good time with it. There's like some really good music in the movie. Uh, but like they use like I don't think it's on the soundtrack, but they use like a Led Zeppelin song. And there's just like it's a pretty solid soundtrack. Let me actually bring up the track list here. So the track list features. Yeah, so it features 10 songs, and then there's two songs that are not in the soundtrack. So the first one, we have War, uh, Bone Thugs, Thugs and Harmony version of that. Uh, we have another one, Bites of Dust, which is a Queen, which is a feature, uh, it's remixed, or a remix of another one, Bites of Dust, featuring Wyclef Jean, Pross, and, uh, let's see, Free and Cannabis, so that's like a cover of that. We have uh, Billy Squire, uh, The Strokes, and... Um, Doing the, or like the stroke by Billy Squire, "Love Is a Battlefield" by uh, Pat Benatar. That's kind of playing you like a radio in like the opening of the movie, or the kids like in a toy store. Uh, there's "Rock and Roll Part 2 by Gary Glitter. We have "Love Removal Machine" by The Cult. Uh, "My City Was Gone" by The Pretenders. We have "Surrender" by Cheap Trick. Uh, "Tom Sawyer" by Rush. And then we have uh, "War" by Edwin Starr. "War" shows up twice, and it's also kind of funny because "War." Um, actually showed up in another movie that we talked about earlier in this series, which was um, Rush Hour, the Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker movie. movie. And the two songs featured in the movie but not on the soundtrack is Communication Breakdown by Led Zeppelin and Wannabe by Spice Girls. I don't know. I think Led Zeppelin probably just, just didn't want to license their stuff to a soundtrack because I know they were like notoriously kind of like not letting their music be used in that way or like maybe they were, they were fine with it being in the movie but not on the soundtrack. And the Spice Girls, like, it's my, probably my fav one of my favorite scenes of the movie because they use wannabe by, Spice, by the Spice Girls as, like, a psychological warfare um, technique. The commando will use it against, like, the people that are holding, that are harboring the, the Gorgonites. Um, it could have been also been because the Spice Girls also released um, Spice World, at least in the United States, earlier that year, and maybe they didn't want th that song on two soundtracks. Maybe they were like, well, okay, if you want to get this have one to be on a soundtrack you've got to buy ours and not the small Sol or the um the small soldiers uh soundtrack but overall the soundtrack is really good like those um like i said my favorite scene is probably the scene with the um with wannabe by the spice girls so the soundtrack is great uh, let's see here um there's a lawsuit by somebody named gregory p grant who basically says that um he pitched an idea of something called like i think it was called toy soldiers Pitch it to DreamWorks, they passed on it, but then they started developing their own thing. It was saying basically it was like they basically just lifted his ideas, basically. Uh, let's see. Apparently, and also there was going to be a plan. That they were planning to do a remake of this movie at some point. I think Justin Lin was attached to direct it. And I think it was like a Fox movie, but it got canceled when Disney acquired Fox. And they got kind of like basically got rid of a bunch of projects. And apparently it was supposed to be a remake of Small Soldiers. So that's just basically um, some notes on the film. We're just going to go in and do a quick kind of recap of the film. So film starts off with a um, kind of a media propaganda thing by, by a like military company that makes like military grade like like weapons and things like that. And they're expanding into the kind of like the uh, private sector. So they are um, basically just it almost feels like OCP from Robocop in a, in a way. But they're kind of expanding, and then um, that company ends up buying um, this uh, this toy company. Who um, is the, the CEO of the, of the company is played by Dennis Leary. He goes on one of his famous little Dennis Leary. Don't really know if I want to call him a rant because that's like a Dennis Miller thing. But like he does one of his like tirades or whatever you want to call him about something. And it basically hires out um, David Cross and Jay Moore, I believe, or the actors, to kind of build these new toys and the, the original pitch is the Gorgonites and then Jay Moore's character pitches the small soldiers and then they basically decide to say okay we're gonna have we're gonna do both these toy lines and these factions are gonna be at war with one, with one another <laughs> so um, they, they, they go to work and then uh, Jay Moore's character ends up ordering a bunch of military grade computer chips to have program and power these uh these toys so these toys can you know they can walk they can talk they can apparently like learn about like stuff as well 
And of course, just like you would expect, that goes completely wrong. And the toys uh, get loose, they cause all kinds of chaos, and um, basically they turn this small town, or at least part of it, into their own little like battlefield, basically. Like the toys show up at a toy store, and I recognize the actor in this. He plays a truck driver, and um, when I, I forget the actor's name, but when I looked him up, I mean, the reason he looked familiar is the truck driver is played by the same guy who plays the gun store clerk in the original Terminator. He's been in a ton of stuff. Uh, forget the guy's name, but like he's basically been around, or he was around. He passed away, unfortunately, but um, been in a ton of stuff. Like I said, like he's once you like once I saw like that he was the Terminator, I'm like oh that's the guy. He's the guy who basically Schwarzenegger goes into the store. It's like I want this, this, and this. And the guy's like, oh, you can't do that in here. They shoot the guy, but uh, same actor. So he gives these kids um, one Gorgonite toy and one Commando Elite. Gives him the um, the one voiced by Tommy Lee Jones. It's Tommy Lee Jones and Frank Langella are the two leaders of their respective groups in this movie. And it, he's got those toys and the toys. Uh, get out, and they, they start fighting with each, each other. Eventually, more of those toys show up, and they all end up getting um, getting loose. The Gorgonites are hiding in the store, and the store gets trashed. Um, Kirsten Dunst plays um, kind of like the kid's love interest somewhat. She's like a neighbor of his, and she's got a bunch of, they're called Gwendy dolls, but they're basically like Barbies. But uh, what in one scene that's kind of twisted and kind of cool is the um, Commando Elite take a bunch of these Gwendy dolls, and basically, like, they take a chip and they basically reprogram all these Gwendy dolls to be on their side. It's kind of a twisted thing because, like, the dolls have, like, little, like, saw blades attached to their hands. And, like, they're, like, definitely, it's definitely very Frankenstein-ish. Because, like, even, like, when they're getting powered up, it's very much an homage to Frankenstein in that way. But... The toys get loose. They start causing chaos. Um, there's a scene with Robert Picardo. Remember, uh, he plays the doctor on Voyager. He has like a. He's only in one scene, but he's he's really good in the scene because he's the one that designed the chips that these that are powering these things. And he's they're like they're like, hey, there's a problem with your chips. He's like, no, there's no problem with the chips. It's a problem in whatever the programming behind the chips is. And he it's it's just one scene that he's in. But um, then the um, the commando elite basically rally together outside of this house and say, like, hey, we know you, you're harboring the Gargonites. You better, like, give them to us. And that's when they start using Wannabe by Spice Girls as psychological warfare. And then in one scene, it's uh, Phil Hartman's uh, character's wife is, like, screaming that She's like, I love this song. This is a really fun scene. And it kind of reminded me of the scene in Rush Hour when um, <coughs> there's a character who is singing along to um, Fantasy by Mariah Carey. It's the like, same kind of vibe. It's pretty fun. But uh, basically, like, the um, the Commando Elite eventually get um, defeated. The Gorgonites um, end up going off on their own little, like, adventure. They get set free, basically. Um, and that's kind of about it. It's like, it the, the, doesn't really have much of a plot, but the movie is just a lot of fun. Um, like I said, you could tell that the, the cast, the acting cast, or the voice cast, really were getting into this role, really getting into the movie. It's just... A lot of fun. I would recommend it. Um, and like I said, it's on HBO Max currently. It was on, I want to say Paramount earlier in the year, but it got removed for some reason. Now, But now it's on HBO, so it's watchable. Like I said, I was going to do this video uh, much sooner, but then by the time I got right like around to actually wanting to watch it, it was already off of streaming. But it's on HBO, so I would recommend watching it. But um, that is going to do it for this episode on Small Soldiers. Uh, we'll be back again in a few days. Probably be doing, uh, let's see, do we probably be doing another video game of some kind? Don't know exactly what that's going to be just yet, because let me check my notes here. Yeah, because we did an album last, and the one prior to that was a video game, so yeah, so uh, album, movie, video game. So next one will be a video game. Don't exactly know what that's going to be just yet, but we'll be back in a few days with that. Again, that's going to do it for now, so remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Take care and have a good one. See ya.